You could ask yourself a question. Do I feel lucky? Welcome back, ladies and gents. Just catching up on some old films. But Canada this morning is also asking themselves, just like Dirty Harry, do I feel lucky? Brenda Lucky in the news this morning. She's the RCMP commissioner who decided that politics were more important than an active investigation, the reputation of the RCMP, and public safety. We have here in the news this from Halifax Examiner. RCMP Commissioner Brenda Lucky tried to jeopardize mass murder investigation to advance Trudeau's gun control efforts. And this has to do with a uh, incident back in 2020. But we know as of recent, Trudeau to ban handguns, handgun purchases in Canada, reported on this from the counter signal before. Also, Trudeau's own words here. Seemingly coming out of nowhere or coming from the news from the United States, as if this was new news, uh, he went and made this announcement. We're introducing legislation to implement a national freeze on handgun ownership. What this means is that it will no longer be possible to buy, sell, transfer, or import handguns anywhere in Canada. Yeah, very proud of himself that he came up with this impromptu uh, measure. Well, it turns out, no, they were pushing for this for some time. We have Brenda Lucky here with Justin Trudeau. RCMP Commissioner Brenda Lucky made a promise to Public Safety Minister Bill Blair that the commi- and the Prime Minister's office to leverage the mass murders of April 1819, 2020, to get a gun control law passed. A week after murders, Lucky pressured RCMP in Nova Scotia to release details of the weapons used by the killers. But RCMP commanders in Nova Scotia refused to release such details, saying that doing so would threaten their investigation into the murders. The Trudeau government's gun control objectives were spelled out in an order in council issued... Pardon me. An order in council issued in May 2020 and were encapsulated in Bill C-21, which was tabled last month. But the concern in April 2020 was the extent to which politics threatened to interfere with a cross-border police investigation into how the killer managed to obtain and smuggle into Canada for illegal guns to commit many of the 22 murders. The RCMP subsequently learned that the killer paid a man named Neil Gallivan to purchase the assault-style rifle, notably the language there, assault-style rifle. What is an assault rifle? It's not an assault rifle. That would be a military-grade functional weapon. Assault-style would be with the ergonomics of, uh, that's why styled, rifle at a 2019 gun show in uh, Hewleton, Maine. The killer also obtained two legal, illegal handguns from a close friend and collector named Sean Conlo, Conlogu. <clears throat> no charges have been laid against either Cal- Galavan or Conlogu, and still unclear why. <clears throat> Excuse me. But the Mounties didn't have that information on April 28th, 2020. They Just one week after the murders, Nova Scotia... Uh, Superintendent Darren Campbell briefed journalists at a news conference compared to earlier briefings given by Superintendent Chris Leather, uh, Leather a, the head of criminal operations, Campbell and was much more forthcoming. He answered questions about the timeline of, for the murders, the possible motivation for the gunman, and the condition, conditional role of the ultimate partner, Lisa Banfield. Oh, sorry, the intimate partner, Lisa Banfield. The firearms question, Campbell told journalists he could not get into the details because the investigation was still active and ongoing, except to confirm the gunman had several semi-automatic handguns and two semi-automatic rifles. Shortly after the news conference, Campbell Assistant Commander Lee Bergerman, Leather, and Nova Scotia Communications Director Leah Scanlan 
were summoned to a meeting. RCMP Commissioner Brenda Lucky and a deputy from Ottawa were on the conference call. Lucky was not happy. And I apologize if I'm um, missaying people's names. Some of these names are difficult to pronounce. Uh, again, apologies for that. Lucky was not happy in this conference call. Campbell's handwritten notes made immediately following at that meeting described what happened. The commissioner was obviously upset. She did not raise her voice, but her voice, or sorry, her choice of words was indicative of her overall dissatisfaction with our work. The commissioner accused us in quotes, me, of disrespecting her by not following her instructions. I was and remain confused over this. The commissioner said she told the comms to tell us at H Division to include specific info about the firearms used by the killer. However, I said we couldn't, we couldn't, because to do so would jeopardize ongoing efforts to advance the U.S. side of the case as well as the Canadian components of the investigation. These facts, I stand by them. C Campbell noted that Lucky went on at length and said she was sad and disappointed, in quotes, that he had not provided these details to the media, Campbell continued. The commissioner said, she had promised the ministers of public safety and the prime minister's office that the RCMP would release this information. Mind you, these offices are political offices. They're not, they're not uh, police investigation offices. The minister of public safety and the prime minister's office. So the, the commissioner had said that the, she had promised the, these two offices that the RCMP would release this information. This obviously is the case where th th such information could jeopardize the uh, investigation itself. I tried to explain that there was no intent to disrespect anyone. However, we could not release this information at that time. The commissioner then said we didn't understand and that it was and that this was try was tied to pending gun control legislation that would make officers and the public safer. So bringing politics directly to this investigation and to her position of authority over uh, people in this investigation. She was very upset and, at the point, Deputy Commissioner Brian Brennan tried to get things calmed down, but that had little effect. Some in the room were reduced to tears and emotional over this belittling reprimand. So this this is clearly a case where the the commissioner is stepping beyond her bounds as a commissioner, uh, appointed um, by the RCMP, or uh, I'm not sure who she's appointed to the RCMP by, but she's stepping above the, the bounds of her duties and trying to play a public role in getting information and releasing it to the public and releasing it to uh, political offices uh, for the sake of political gains in this case. And this is why this is significant to uh, the news this morning and why this is um, an issue. This is really an issue um, that needs to be taken taken to con severe consideration. Uh, keeping the death toll from the public, a document released by Mass Casualty Commission, MCC today, public commissioners from the RCMP and government after Porta Peak indicates there was earlier sources of tension between the National RCMP headquarters and Ottawa H Division in Nova Scotia about how information concerning the victims would be controlled. Now, the article goes on to say about how um, some of the, the victims, uh, the, the, the information coming out about this was, was all over the place. Now, this, this, is, this is the case in any ongoing investigation as they put it out into the media um, they, they can only give so much information. They can't give uh, accurate information or they, they, they'll, they'll refrain from divulging information until that information is, is, um, is possible to give out accurately. So, and also, the, in the cases of investigation, you don't divulge information if that information can be used by uh, members of somebody involved that has not yet been apprehended um, to get away with it, essentially. 
So it's important to keep some things um, in not leaked out to the, the public at a particular time. Um, here we have some inconsistencies with uh, the information that was released about how many victims were in this case. Uh, but at the end, the senior commissioner manager from RCMP, he says, uh, in, in Ottawa, public safety commissioner Bill Blair, Commissioner Lucky, conducted their own media briefing on Monday at 2.30 p.m. The senior commissioner, communications manager for the RCMP HQ, Sharon Tessier, had called Nova Scotia comms earlier in that day to say that HQ supported releasing the names of all victims. During his briefing, Blair announced that the killer's victims included a nurse teacher, corrections officer, uh, serving police officer, parents, neighbors, and friends. Blair Lucky talked about 18 lives being lost, according to the... They're adding to the inconsistency and confusion over how large of a tragedy had occurred. So trying to jump the gun, trying to play a political game with this this active investigation, this tragedy that happened in Canada here in the in the hour, the days and hours after this occurred. On Tuesday, April 21, RCMP Nova Scotia posted information on its Facebook account named that named the communities where the killer had taken lives and confirmed the total of 23 victims later in that day. The number was adjusted to 22 and revised post acknowledged the killer had been shot by police. Now, this uh, calls into question whether Commissioner Lucky uh, should remain in her job. A lot of people calling for her resignation at this time. And also questions come about about the um, the purpose for this and the the current legislation that's being pushed through, as we see here, uh, Trudeau to ban handguns and how they've taken a, a horrible tragedy tragedy and turned it into a political issue and turned um, and tried to push forward legislation. Also, backpacking or piggybacking off of uh, a tragedy that happened down in Texas recently uh, to make their announcement on social media. And it's really disgusting behavior, and it needs to be called out any time that we see this. And here I am uh, doing my part in calling this out. So anyway, this is all I had to add. Let me know in the comments what you think about this particular topic, what we should do with Commissioner Lucky uh, with the RCMP and, and this situation ongoing. Um, other than that, that's all I have for you at this moment. We'll see you in the next video. Keep on trucking.